So before we end today, we need to do what we need to do every end of the day. On our sheet number four, we need to do the first part of it, archiving the site. So if you were here last month, we did this several times. You should be coming, should be becoming second nature. And this is what I'm saying about this is this is how to make the backup of the site to have a perfect copy in case something goes wrong. So we'll do it together now here. We've got this site that I've just finished doing all the backups for. It's ready to add extra features to next time, but right now I want to do backups. Question? No, you said backup, you meant updates. Yes, we did the updates, and now we'll do a backup. So here on our site, on the left side, we have the duplicator menu item. Hover over duplicator and select packages. And then it says we have no packages, no backups. So on the top right, we can click Create New. Let's create a new package there on the top right. Click that. This is uh, going to put in then the date, 2015 10.05. We can change that if we want, but I would leave that because then it'll be in order every time we make a backup with a new day, it'll have that file name. That's the name of the zip file, the archive that it creates. And I do recommend here in my notes, under the notes, you can add your own note about what's in the archive. So I do recommend we click there under notes. And under notes, we'll give ourselves some notes. We'll say updated WordPress, all themes, all plugins. What else did we do today? We updated the menu, didn't we? So we could say, um, I don't know, refined menu items. And oftentimes what I do inside of this note is also write a to-do list. What's going to be done? What do, what's to do? What do we still need to do? Well, one of the big things that we still need to do is add core. I call them the core plugins. Add e-commerce plugin. We'll talk about the, the plugins that I recommend for a successful site, probably next time. Uh, these are plugins, there's about five of them that I recommend for, for every client that my company takes on for a variety of extra features that are very useful. We'll talk about that. And then of course e-commerce. We'll add the e-commerce, which then needs products and inventory and prices and shipping and all of that. We'll select next. It's going to scan the server. Everything seems to be good. If anything says warning, we want to try to fix the warning, but we can still proceed. If something says error, then we cannot proceed. One possibility of getting a warning is under large files. If you didn't delete that zip file, remember earlier today we went into the folder and deleted the zip file. You didn't delete that zip file, now an archive would be inside of an archive. And that wouldn't work out so well. What could also happen is if you upload your photos directly from your digital camera. You don't want to do that. It's much too high quality to display on the web. So oftentimes this is the big problem that I get with a client, large files. And if you click Show Paths, it'll tell you exactly which file in which folder to, that is too big. There isn't anything going to be here that says delete it or rename it or whatever. It just tells you, here's a problem, you go fix it. Mine doesn't have any. And so everything in here looks good. My whole site in total is about 25 megabytes and one megabyte database. Even though I really haven't done anything with my site, it's already 26 megabytes. And it's going to keep growing and growing as I add pictures and text and videos and so forth. Yes. 
Yes. In this case, my local host means it's um, my, my actual local Your actual host. server on, online. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes it uses the term local host literally or figuratively. Literally, it's here on these computers, local host. But figuratively, you can also use local host on a real server. It's just that internally, it makes sense internally. Um, I wouldn't worry about it if it says it there, localhost, but just be aware that if your address here says localhost, then it's definitely not live on the internet. If, you, if that has a real address, like victor.com, then it is on the real internet, even though you might still say somewhere in here it's saying localhost, and that's okay. So let's see it. Scanned it. Everything seems good. Yeah, exactly. Host, localhost. So don't worry if it says it there, as long as it works. I'm going to click build. It's going to scan every folder, every file, every picture, everything in the database, compress that all together into one project, one zip file. If you've got a very complex site, that'll take much longer than this. It went faster than I finished talking. But on a real server, I have seen it take 10 seconds, 15 seconds, one minute. I've waited on one, on one project, it did take 15 minutes. Now at about 10 minutes, I'm like, is this thing broken or what? I'll just wait a little longer. 13 minutes later, is this thing broken? I'll wait a little bit more. 15 minutes later, it, it was done. So if I had canceled it at one of those points, I'd have to start again. So if it doesn't seem to be responding, just wait a little longer. Because for me, personally, it has taken 15 minutes to do a backup sometimes. When you get to this point, it says your package is completed. It created the installer, a brand new installer.php file, and a brand new zip file. Remember in the beginning of the day I gave you a folder from last month that had, an, that had the installer and the zip file from last month. <coughs> this one has a new one, installer and archive file. So here you need to click installer and it will quote unquote download it, even though we're not on a real server. It says, what would you like to save this to? I mean, would you like to open it or would you like to save it? I would like to save it. And by default on these computers, I believe it's going to save to your desktop. Yeah, there it is. On my desktop, it's saved installer. And I also need to do the same thing for the archive. Notice it went from about 25 megabytes to 10. So I'm going <coughs> to click archive, same thing, open or save. I want to save. <coughs> and on the desktop, it saved the zip file called 2015-1005-victorsbakery-5612-fae, etc., 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 dot zip. Both of these files, then, are a perfect copy of my site. This doesn't happen automatically. I always do it myself, but I then create a brand new folder. So just right click, go to your desktop, right click, new folder. And I'm creating a new folder, 2010, 10, I mean 2015, 10, 05. So I created a folder to store these two. I'm going to move these two into the new folder, and that's my backup, which I will put into the network folder. So if you'd like a copy of my work so far today, you can get it from the network. When we come back next time, you can use your project or my project in the network. I want to make sure this time I saved it. What were the two files again? I'm sorry, it was the 2005... Installer.php and then a zip file with a big old name. So this is the zip file. Okay. Yeah, there it is. It's all right. Okay. I found it. So in the network folder, if you'd like it, now I put in today's archive. This doesn't happen automatically. Notice I created a folder with the date, and then I put my zip file 
in my PHP file into that folder. And I've got a backup. To be even more safe, I can put one on my flash drive as well. Question? When you run Duplicator on your remote server, mm -hmm. when you get to this spot where the package is completed and you save it and you click on these to save them, it'll open up a local uh, browser window, right? So that it, it saves all the way from the cloud right to your local yes. machine, right? Yes. So it does the FTP for you. In a sense, a download, exactly. It downloads for you that that archive file. Um, so then we get a local copyright on our desktop or downloads folder. Yes. Yes. You do, but the funny thing about the Mac is on the Mac it tries to help you that whenever it encounters a zip file, it unzips it for you which is not good. We want to have the zip file and the installer file. Yeah, I thought I'm saving them both. Okay, good. As long as you save them both in a, in a, in a folder together and make sure that it's a zip file, then you're fine. Uh, and we put your documents in that folder as well? So we, 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 um, you could. Archive on it. You could, um, but the way that I have it on my flash drive, for example, I have a flash drive that I have, you know, the name of a folder, WordPress. I have a folder on my flash drive called WordPress 2. And in that folder is where I'm putting my backups and my documents. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's exactly good. That's my flash drive. There's the folder and then there's the PDFs. Yes. At my workstation, never use dashes in file names. Really? Um, the dashes? Yeah. Dashes are okay and underscores are okay. You don't want to use spaces. Spaces could be problematic because some servers will will think that after there's a space, that's the end of the file name. But usually, dashes and underscores should work okay. Would be, but maybe at your particular work in your particular servers, they don't want space or dashes. Use Google Drive and you already see Google Drive. That should accept dashes. All oh, Unix servers is written up dashes. They all have Yeah, that's pretty compatible nowadays. You want to avoid spaces, but you can use dashes and underscores. When I pressed archive, it didn't give me the option to pick um, save file. It just uh, came down. It depends on the web browser. Mine, Firefox, gave me the option. Some web browsers just do it. Oh. So if it just did it for you, great. Check your desktop and make sure your files are there. If yeah. it didn't, we're going to have lab time very soon and we'll, we'll okay. find your file. So we're going to end, oh, I'm going to put also my notes. These notes that I wrote, I'm going to put them into the network folder if you'd like a copy of my notes about backups. I just put it in the network folder called Notes 2015-1005. We're going to end the main lecture at this point. Usually we'll have a little more time to work because today we had uh, the registration at the beginning. Next time, we don't need to register again. We're already registered. We're just going to sign in and get started, and we'll have a little more time. So we'll have some lab time until 4. I do have to say 4 on the dot because I need to beat traffic. Uh, so thank you for coming today. Make sure you signed in. And if you were new today, make sure you enrolled.